Well, good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning to you. Mr. Munch, we just had coffee at Badass Coffee. Oh, man, I'm a tough guy, huh? <laughs> Best coffee in town. This really, really great coffee. The guy that owns the place is a, is a nice guy. His name's Dave. You know, while I go into work, I thought I would take a second to have a little chat. Have a little chat about something that uh, that's important. The most um, the most important thing. People say, "Well, that's your opinion." Well, I'm living proof that that when things are important and you pay attention to them, you know what? It can change your life. And so this morning, on my way to work, I want to talk a little. I'm going to do a little bit. Let's do a little chatting. Uh oh, watch out, he's gonna talk about something serious. Well, it's serious, but it's an absolute joy, too, you know. I wanna tell you, I wanna share with you the difference between God and religion. How about that? How about that? And you know what? You can, you say, well, I'm gonna take that with a grain of salt. Well, good, I hope that you do. I want you to investigate. I want you to go to God with it. I want you to just, do some looking, do some asking, do some investigating because the importance of the eternal, the eternal part of you, whether you know it or not, or believe it or not, or understand it or not, you and I have a part of, we, we're three part. We have body, we have spirit, and we have a soul. And the body is temporary. The body's temporary. The soul is what gives you your personality. That's your soul. That's your personality. That's who you are. But the spiritual part, the spiritual part of you and I are going to live forever. It does, that doesn't die. You know, you can't, you can't squish a shadow. You know, it, it doesn't die. Your spirit was given by God. Your personality was given to you by God. Your giftings were given to you by God. You know, you and I just didn't crawl out of the primordial uh, ooze down at Brea Tar Pit and evolve into what we are. Your personality, your your consciousness, your your ability to reason, your desire to know God, whether we admit it or not, there's a deep hunger in the heart of every single man, whether they admit it or pursue it or not, there's desire put there by God to know your creator. That's why everyone on this planet, there's a desire there. And you go to a deserted island. They've never heard about God. They've never even uh, seen a Bible or any of that stuff at all. And what are they doing? They're worshiping stones and carving idols. Mankind in religion, carving idols, making idols of of men and women and dogs and cats and the Egyptians making just there's a desire there's a hunger to know God and the Bible says even creation points to God if you look around just look around put things under a microscope look up into the sky you know there's a desire to know a creator you just these things just don't happen this V-Strom wasn't created the manufacturer didn't put all these parts in a box separate and shake that box for a million years and it becomes a V-Strom. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. Same thing with creation. Every, every animal was created after its kind. Man was created and continues to thrive and have a hunger for God because God put it there. He put it there. He wants you to know Him. There's a hunger for God within our hearts because God's placed it there so we can, He wants us to know Him. He wants us to know Him. You know, He doesn't, religion, religion is, is, religion is you and I trying to be good enough to earn God's approval. That's bottom line. Religion, anywhere you go, religion is man's is man's uh, <laughs> the police department throws you off <laughs> religion well there you go there's the law right there you know the Old Testament is the law and so 
that keeps us in line. The law of the Old Testament is drive us to God. But let me, I digress. The wonderful thing is that God not only gives us a desire to know Him, to know our, know our Creator, He's given us the ability in which to know God, and that came through Christ. That came through Christ. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Okay? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through me. Like this crossing guard. She's saying, stop. And even right now, I hope that you would stop and take a minute and consider, consider that God not only knows you and loves you, but he's got a plan for your life. And so the great thing is that you and I can sit here, we can talk about that, and we can, we can reason together. Now, don't take Joe's word for it. But Jesus said, I'm the way, which way to go? I'm the truth, which truth? And I'm the life. Where do you get life? From God. You, you get it nowhere else. You get it nowhere else. Whether it's the trees, there's life in the tree. Where does it come from? Where does life come from? Where does the living essence of these things around us, you and I, the, the animals, the plants, where does the life part come from? That doesn't evolve by some climbing out of some dead primordial ooze. Where does the life come from? I mean, step back for a minute and think about it. Think about it. Whether it's a worm or a, an elk or a deer or, or you or I or that tree over there, where does the essence, where does the life come from? That's something that we need to think about and not push it aside, not ignore it, not try to blow it off. But God is always, he's always got his hand stretched out. Hey, if the Bible says, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest from your desire and your 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 uh, your frustration and trying to know God, trying to know me, I'll give you rest from that. I'll give you peace. And that's where the peace comes from. That's the great thing about God. Once Christ comes into your heart, once once the Spirit of God comes into the heart of man, as we ask him in by faith, the most important thing is that we know God. And when he comes into a man's heart, he gives the peace you're looking for. All the, all the hungering for God, all the questions about who I am, who you are, who I am, what we're here for, all, that, all those questions disappear. When Christ comes into a man's heart, all those questions disappear. When Christ came into my life in one moment in 1977, when he came into my life and the eyes are open, my understanding, your understanding is opened by the Spirit of God, all those questions about life, why I'm here, what is my destiny, all those questions in one second disappear. How can that happen? Well, it happens by the Spirit of God coming into my heart, coming into your life. He opens our understanding. There's a new birth that talks about, Jesus talks about it in John 3.16. There's a new birth that takes place. The Spirit of God gives you understanding. And in one instant, I knew that I was, that God loved me. In one instant, I knew that I was saved. He came in saved from what? Saved from the penalty of my sin, eternal damnation, uh, separation from a holy God. I was saved from the bondage of sin. I didn't have to sin anymore. I don't, not that I don't sin anymore, none's perfect, but the, 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 the bondage and the grip that sin had on my life, I didn't even realize, though I was a good guy, I didn't realize that sin had me in bondage. And now with Christ in a man's heart, the bondage goes away. There's freedom in Christ. There's peace and there's joy. There's peace and joy. Why? Why? Because I know I'm right with God. Because of what Joe's done? No. But because of what Jesus Christ has done for you and I. So settle it. You know, it's not that, that, that Joe has anything to say, but I'm just conveying a message that, again, the Bible saying that God so loved the world, he loved you and I so much that he gave his only begotten son. In other words, Christ came died on my behalf. That's like if I get a speeding ticket, if this thing could go 140 miles an hour, and if I get a speeding ticket for 140 miles an hour, 
by that policeman that was behind me a few minutes ago, if I get a speeding ticket for 140 miles an hour and I'm guilty, I mean, I am guilty, I got busted, you know, I could go to jail. They could impound the bike. But the wonderful thing is what God did for you and I, you know, we're sinners, whether we admit it or not. We're sinners. We don't always do what's right. There's a sin nature within me. But if I go before a judge doing 140 miles an hour and I am guilty, it's on radar. I got tracked by helicopter. There's no getting around it. I'm guilty. I stand before the judge and salvation is as if that judge, though I'm guilty, I'm guilty. You and I are guilty of sin. Guilty of falling short of the holiness of God. It, it, is, it is as if that judge from behind the bench who knows I'm guilty, who knows I'm guilty, I know I'm guilty. As It is as if that judge would get up from the chair behind the bench, take his judgment robe off, come around the bench, stand next to me, and pay my fine for me. That's exactly what Jesus did. I am guilty of sin. We are all guilty of sin. None is righteous. No, not one. All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. So we're all in the same boat. Religion is man trying to get his work his way to God apart from Christ. That It doesn't work. Because when Christ comes into your life by faith, by asking him into your life, he gives you. The Father gives you Christ's righteousness by faith. In other words, when I come to Christ and I ask him into my life and ask him to forgive me, Lord, I believe you died for me. You paid the price for my sin. He comes into my life. And at that moment, by me exercising trust in Christ, the Bible says that God imputes Christ. He gives he imputes Christ's righteousness to me so that when I, if I was to die right now, this very second, and I stand before God, and we all will. We all will, because we're sinners. We were created by him. We have to give account to him. It sounds scary, but if you think about it, in Christ, it's not scary at all. I got a great hope. If I was to die right this second, right this second, and stand before God at the judgment day, I stand before God spotless and clean, and at peace with God. Why? Because I'm a good guy? Far from it. It's not by performance. It's not by, by my works and by my performance. It's by what Christ, what he did. It was by his works and his performance as being holy and completely righteous. And so when I die, I stand before the creator, my creator and your creator, clean and spotless and able to be in his presence and enjoy heaven and eternity with a wonderful holy savior and all those that have come to christ by faith but then on the flip side there are those that will stand before god and they will say i went to church i gave money i did good deeds i washed people's cars i helped old ladies across the street i gave money and the sad part is, and Jesus himself says it, on that day, you don't want to hear this. He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. I never knew you. And at that point, do you think that a person who rejected Christ, who died apart from Christ, though he did all these things, you think that that person that, that rejected a personal relationship with God, when it was offered to him while he was on this planet. Can that person stay in the presence of God? No, not going to happen. God is a holy God. And the only way, with this is what, what uh, many people don't understand. The only way to get into heaven, the only way is complete perfection. Oh man, I'm dead. You're exactly right. You're exactly, you mean Joe, you have to be absolutely as spotless, put it this way. <clears throat> to get into heaven, you and I need to be as holy and as spotless as Jesus Christ. Oh man, I'm dead. You're exactly right. We None of us can make it. That's why the Bible says the Old Testament was our schoolmaster. The Ten Commandments were never made for you and I to be able to follow. No man on planet Earth has ever 
follow the Ten Commandments completely. Impossible. And the Bible says if you break one, you've broken them all. So in other words, the whole planet is guilty. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that put us all in the same boat. Religion is not going to save you because you can't be good enough. So that put us in the same boat. The only way that you and I can get into heaven is to have and to be as righteous as Jesus. Well, where do you get that righteousness? By coming to Christ by faith and saying, God, I believe you died for me, Jesus. Come into my life. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe I trust you for my salvation. And at that moment, the Bible says that your trust in Christ, God accounts that to your account. He places Christ's righteousness upon you so that when you die, you stand before God, not in my righteousness, not in your righteousness, but in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So when the Father looks at you and I, we're covered and we're in Christ. If you die apart from Christ, though you be religious, if you die apart from Christ, you're lost. So anyway, I don't even know if the GoPro went this far, but there's just something on my heart to share this morning. Love you guys. Love you so much. I can't not share that. I cannot not share that. So love you. I'll talk to you soon. So, yep, yeah, religion, no, nope, doesn't do it. It doesn't do it because only one person came and died for you and I and rose from the dead. Historical fact, only one person, Christ. And there's only one person that will get us into heaven. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Any questions, drop them in the comment. Uh, I'd love to help if I can. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>